All right, <clears throat> I'm here, hopefully, I think. Let me know what's going on creative if you can. And of course now I'm in a different room because I don't have an ethernet cable where I was before. Um, so hello. Uh, if it's dropping a whole bunch or super laggy, let me know. It still says that there are a lot of frame drops. So I don't know what's going on with that. Um, I'm going to move into what I'm going to do today, uh, and then you're welcome to just uh, drop a chat or a comment in the chat and let me know if it's like super wonky. Um, okay, so uh, we're going to start with some breath work today, like I like to start with. Um, we're going to focus a little bit more on uh, stretching our hips out and getting into our upper legs a little more too. I liked doing calf stuff last time and uh, and I want to do a little bit more leg stuff today. Thanks for that. Um, okay, large screen good, phone. Okay, I don't know if that's a phone connectivity or if that's still my problem, but I'll definitely, I'm going to have to just troubleshoot that this week. I figure out what's going on. Um, yes, yeah, so we're going to work on some lower body stuff today. I always like to throw a little spine stretch in there just because we are sitting down a lot or people are sitting down a lot in front of screens and it's good to move our upper bodies as well. Okay. All right. So we're going to do uh, some more slow breathing. Um, we're gonna inhale for five seconds this time and exhale for eight. Uh, at the top of our inhale and the bottom of our exhale, I would like you to hold your breath for one second. So big breath in and then hold and then exhale for eight. Okay, ready? Here we go. Inhale for five. Hold it. Exhale for eight. Inhale. And hold. And exhale. Inhale. Exhale. On your exhales, think about letting your shoulders relax. Hold. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. And let it all go. Go ahead and go back to breathing normally. Whenever I'm doing these breathing exercises, I like to make sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the exhale is hard, the long exhale. You really got to pull in as much air as you can on that inhale. Um, otherwise, you're just really reaching for nothing at the very end of the exhale. It's good practice, too, um, on those five seconds of really filling up our lungs and our abdominal cavity as much as possible, like using that diaphragm to bring as much air as possible uh, into our bodies. Uh, I like to imagine making my belly into like a big Santa belly or, you know, just like put, filling it full of air. Whereas like I think, uh, and I don't know if this is like a societal thing or something else, but I think like generally when I see people inhaling, they're actually creating a concave shape underneath their rib cage, which is where our diaphragm is. So a diaphragm is a really big muscle. I'm wearing black too, so it's like hard to see what's going on here. But if you find the bottom of your rib cage, 
in underneath that those bottom ribs is this flat muscle that separates our abdominal cavity from our chest cavity and it is the the mover for our breath so when we're moving it to inhale we really want to expand this area versus bringing it in and maybe that's just like a people are sensitive about what their belly looks like or whatnot, but it's normal to have it expand as we inhale. <sighs> okay, uh, we're gonna take another deep breath in and we're gonna bring our arms up over our heads just to bring some movement into our upper bodies. Go ahead and stretch up as far as you can, like really reach and lift your chin towards the ceiling to bring some space into the front of your neck. You're gonna take a deep breath here and then exhale. And then one more breath, and on your next exhale, you're going to lean forward all the way as far as you can. I will definitely be out of the screen for that. Getting some movement, stretching into your lower back here. Leaning as far forward as you possibly can. Take a deep breath here. Exhale all of it out. Let that stretch go as far as you can. And then on your inhale, come back up slowly. And then we're going to keep uh, a movement with our arms as we breathe. So we're gonna inhale our arms up overhead. Exhale, stretch forward like we did, I think last time. Exhale, all that air out. And then inhale, arms backwards. And then exhale, arms down. And then inhale, arms up. Exhale, arms forward. Inhale, arms back. Exhale, arms to your sides. One more time, inhale, arms up. Exhale, reach forward, really curve your upper back. Drop your shoulders and then inhale, arms back. Exhale, relax. Okay, so we're gonna move into working on our hips a little bit. I don't know about you, but whenever I'm sitting still, I get really sore right here in the front of my hip. There's a big muscle there called your psoas that actually connects to the inside of your spine right here, right underneath your belly button. It's attaching to your spinal cord, and then it moves down into your hip, right into the top of your femur, that big leg bone. Okay, so it's getting crushed <laughs> all the time when we're sitting like this um, on top of like having groin muscles and uh, your quadriceps that hook into your hip there too all of those muscles get tight so we're gonna work a little bit on those and we can actually do this while there's worse while we're sitting um, and I'm going to probably figure out how to express this on a television. Okay, so the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is find your hip bone. So if you need to stand up to do this, that's totally fine. Um, you're gonna find the top of your hip bone, mine is right here. Um, and then you're gonna move slightly towards the outside of your body. Right on the inside of your hip bone is this soft area. Uh, so you'll feel your bone and then directly towards the back, there's this soft area, okay? That's your, oh, I'm sorry, I'm going the wrong direction. No, no, I'm going the right direction, okay? This is uh, where your TFL connects. This TFL is your tensor fascia latte. It's the like fibrous band that is the top of your IT band, the iliotibial band, okay? Um, the IT band goes all the way down your leg and into your knee. And you might ask, well, what, are, what does this have to do with my psoas or my leg at all? Um, this band right here helps keep all of those muscles that are on your upper leg just like adhered, okay? Um, whenever we're walking or sitting or standing, we are uh, compressing that, t that TFL up here at the top of your hip. Um, and actually, no, I was wrong. It's not backwards. Um, you find your hip bone and go straight down. There's a soft part. It's easier to find actually when you're sitting. Um, so if you're sitting, find your hip bone and then just go a little bit past it. It's sore. You'll know when you find it. 
a little bit down and it is a tiny bit back, but it's not as far back as I was saying a second ago. Okay, so if you can find that and get your fingers in there, what we're gonna do is, oh yeah, okay, we'll get to that too then. Thanks for that creative. Um, so find that spot. You're gonna bring your leg up with your other hand. So I've got my hand right underneath my knee and then I'm going to let my hand really carry the entire weight of my leg here. And while I've got my fingers shoved into this soft spot here, I'm going to move my leg in and out, okay? This is gonna help loosen up that area a bit. Now, if this is really hard to do, because I'm feeling a bit awkward while I do this, you can leave your foot on the ground. And instead of like lifting your leg like that, you can rotate your knee in and out like this. I have my toes on the ground, which you cannot see. Um, and the rest of my foot is up. So I have like a, a high heel shape happening here. And then I'm just rotating from side to side. You may feel it more as you move your leg in, or you may not. Uh, and then it, the amount of pressure that you're using with your hand in your hip here is up to you. I use a lot, but I've also been sticking my fingers in this part of my body for a very long time, so I can handle a lot. Okay, now we're gonna do that on the other side too. So if you're sitting, find your hip bone, move back slightly, just a little bit until you can find that curve of the hip bone. And then you'll feel that soft spot and you can move down a little bit if you'd like to also. Just get your fingers in there and go ahead and move your leg from side to side. Try and keep your shoulders relaxed while you do this. Hi, how's it going? Welcome to the stream. If you've got anything bothering you that you want me to talk about while I'm here, let me know. Uh, we're mostly gonna be stretching our hips today uh, and getting the upper leg a little bit. Um, but yeah, let me know if there's anything going on for you. Um, right now we've got our hands in our <laughs> TFL and that is the uh, the origin of our IT band. It gets really tense in there, can cause a lot of hip issues. And I'm doing really well. Thank you so much for asking. It's a beautiful day where I am today, which is pretty unusual. So I'm gonna take advantage of that afterwards. All right, after you feel like you've spent enough time doing that, you can give your hips a nice little like dome need if you want to. Um, we're going to move into working uh, the insertions of our IT band right here around our knee. Um, this area is another area that can be super sore. Um, I mean, the whole IT band is crazy. I mean, every time I was giving anybody a massage, if they needed IT band work, it was always the most painful thing for people. Um, goals here are always to take deep breaths as much as possible. We're going to work. We just worked the origin, we're gonna work the insertion of the IT band, which is where it connects into our knee, and then we're gonna work the center just a little bit before we move on to like the backs of our hips. Okay, so uh, let me know if you have any like extra questions about how to make this work for you too, because this is like really hard to show on the screen. Okay, all right, so grab your knee. Literally grab your knee. So if you start with your knee bent, it's gonna be a little bit easier just because that's what I'm doing right now. I'm gonna bring my hand into a C shape and I'm gonna put my thumb on the inside of my leg and then my fingers on the outside. Now if you go, if you get your fingers in right here, you'll feel, maybe I should wear shorts next time. There's this section of flesh where there's a big tendon that goes through the back side of your knee. We're gonna be working right above that, okay? So you can get your fingers right above that and there's just a big fibrous bunch of muscle insertions and your IT band here. So we're gonna get our fingers in there and you're gonna find that taut rubber band muscle feel that you're looking for. And you're gonna bring your fingers in and then you're gonna rub them up across the top of it, okay? You can start right here near your knee and then work your way up a little bit. Oh, 
thank you for the follows. That's so awesome. Thank you. Oh, what was I doing with my feet? Oh, are you talking about when we were doing the hip stretch? Um, I had like a high heel like thing happening where I just had my toes on the floor. Yeah, it was hard to see. Um, oh my God, I don't know. <laughs> I'll come and stand over here and we'll, while you guys are massaging your, uh, while you're massaging your uh, knees. I, when I had my foot on the ground, it was like this so that I could really get like some mobility versus like having my heel down. It's a little bit harder to get as much mobility through the hip. When if you have your toes up, then you can rotate your leg from side to side. Okay, let me know if that clears that up for you. And then if you're still doing that, awesome. And if you're into getting into this IT band, that's good too. Okay. Um, and then, you know, while you're doing this, you can work on the inside of your knee also, uh, which is an IT band, but still very quality work. Um, I'm using my thumb here. I'm doing like a this sort of shape while I'm pressing. And so I'm using my whole thumb. It's like a wave. It's pretty cool. <laughs> awesome. Glad you got that. Um, so you can do both sides of your knee at the same time. These muscles tend to be really sore if you have ever had a knee injury. Um, and you know, one of the great things about our bodies is that when we do injure ourselves, our muscles are automatically like, let's stabilize this. So they get super tense. Um, so that they can stabilize that injured area. But oftentimes what ends up happening is they're stabilizing and we have weak muscles that are unable to stabilize as well. So the stabilization isn't balanced. Um, and then what ends up happening is over the long run, if we don't do um, any rehab for the, the injury, then that imbalance sticks around and those muscles that are doing a really good job of stabilizing actually pull things out of alignment and cause more issues in the long run. So it's really important to like make sure that we're getting some nice massage to relax everything so that it can be as even as possible. And then, you know, in, in longer term care, we make sure that we're doing strengthening exercises to create more balance in our bodies. Okay, as you get through that, we're going to get into this middle IT band part. This is really hard to massage just with your hand. And when I had uh, clients in an office, I was almost always using my forearm or my elbow. But one of the things that you can do for yourself is punch yourself, which sounds super weird. It's a massage technique called topotement. It's very often seen in movies, and I think a lot of massage therapists don't use it very much because it is very like cliche, but it works really well for these big muscles that don't have as much um, or aren't as close to a big bone or an organ, say. I like to do this when I'm sitting in the car, especially, um, especially if I'm feeling like a lot of tension in my hips. Basically what you're doing is you're going along this top section of your leg. Um, so if you're looking at the front of my leg, I'm not actually necessarily hitting like right here down the center, although sometimes I do, I'm more angled off to the side here. And this is right here, this line is where our IT band ends and this is where our quadriceps start. So I'm really hitting like the edge of the IT band, um, getting those areas where we have a lot of friction or movement um, and focusing on those areas can actually increase relaxation faster through the rest of the muscle or tendon or ligament or whatever it is that we're working on. So get your fist ready. You can keep your legs straight for this. Um, and you're going to hit your leg with the bottom side of your fist. I'm not using my knuckles usually unless I'm feeling really masochistic for some reason. And I like to start at the top of my leg and just give some solid hits down that leg. <laughs> yeah, tequila. Tequila's good. <laughs> and you know, like whatever pressure you want to use on this, like go for it. I mean, if you hit too hard, you'll definitely bruise yourself, but it's you punching you and not anyone else, so it's okay. Um, but again, we're trying to alleviate pain, so don't be too crazy with it. All right, and when that's feeling good, make sure you get onto the other side. Did you guys massage the other side? I don't think we did, did we? We'll probably have to go into that. You can go ahead and do the punching on this side if you want first.
Generally, I like to keep my legs down and flat when I'm doing this. I just have it up so that you can see what's going on. All right. And if you're feeling good with that, go ahead and get into massaging that leg. Massaging right around your knee. Massaging the outside. You can use two hands if you want, especially if one of your hands is starting to get tired. All right, how are you guys doing with that? Feeling pretty good? Awesome. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, so we're going to move into stretching our hips a little bit more. Um, creative, this should help with that like low back uh, butt pain that you were talking about. That's pretty common. Um, a lot of people like to say that uh, sciatica starts that way. Um, there's a couple of small muscles right along the spine in your low back that can get really tight from sitting or like hunching over. Um, and then they, what they'll do is they'll actually pull on your pelvis, which will tilt it. Um, so our pelvis, if it's even, is usually like this, right? Our, this is the top of our pelvis, say, like this. Do, do, do. And then if those muscles get tight, then they can like offset your pelvis. So the one side is up higher than the other. And when that happens, our gait uh, gets off. So we're not like walking the way we normally would. Um, and that's gonna cause pain in your glutes. Um, and pain in your low back. So we'll definitely address that. And we'll start it with um, uh, crossing our legs. So is everybody comfortable getting their legs like this, ankle on top of your knee, and then other knee up? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So if you're all comfortable doing this, we're gonna start just by pressing on our knee. As you can see, my hips are tight. That's why my knee is up so high. <laughs> Um, so when we press, that's going to give us some more, uh, some more stretch in the hip joint itself. And then we're gonna work our low back into this in just a second after we hold this. Make sure that you're taking some deep, slow breaths, letting your shoulders relax, pressing on that knee as much as feels comfortable. Um, I like to stabilize my ankle a little bit because sometimes my leg will start to slip off and then your other foot can be flat on the floor. Big breaths here. Now as you are sitting here, think about lifting your chest up, bringing your belly button to your spine. That's gonna make your stretch a little bit more intense, so make sure that you're listening to your body. Any sharp shooting pain is not what we're going for. It's good to feel a little soreness or like the actual stretching of the joint, but sharpshooting pain is a no-go. So if you're feeling that, please back off or you know, make some adjustments to your posture to make that more comfortable. One more big breath here. Okay, and now we're gonna switch hands. So if you had one hand on your ankle, you're gonna take that hand to your knee. You're gonna bring this hand up and we're gonna lean forward away from that hip while we are still pushing our knee down, okay? And bring your belly button to your spine here. And as you're doing this, you should feel it in the low back on the side that your hip is on. Big breaths here. Yeah, good, I'm glad you feel it. That means you're getting some good work done. Two more big breaths here. If you're really lucky, you might even feel this halfway up your back. <laughs> and we'll let it go. 
Go ahead and let that leg down. You wanna move your upper body from side to side to get a little bit more movement through there, counteract that stretch that we just did. And then we're gonna move on to the other side. Ankle up onto your knee. And press that knee down. Remember chest up, back straight, belly button to your spine. Deep breaths. Relax your shoulders, especially that one that's holding your knee. Think about bringing that shoulder down and then pressing almost forward with your hand versus straight down. Couple more big breaths here. How's everybody doing with this? Feeling good? One more breath. All right, we're gonna switch hands now. That hand that was on your ankle or other plate or another place, switch hands so that it's on your knee. Bring this hand up above your head. Big breath in, exhale, and lean forward. And as you can see, I'm leaning off to the side a bit. I'm aiming my face towards my foot that's on my ankle. Big breath here. Think about bringing uh, the hip that we're stretching uh, down towards the surface that you're sitting on. Belly button to your spine. Big, deep breaths. Relax your eyebrows and your eyes. Relax your thigh that's connected to your foot that's on the floor. One more breath here. You guys are doing great. And on your exhale, let everything go. Again, get yourself some movement if you need that. And then when you're ready, we're gonna move on to our next hip stretch, which involves bringing our legs up into our chair. Um, if this isn't functional for you in your chair, like I am a pretty small person and I am having a little bit of a trouble getting my leg up here, you can do this on the floor. If you're gonna do it on the floor, I would do it with your other leg straight and then this one tucked into your chest or you can also lay down on the floor and do this, which is pretty awesome. But we're gonna bring our knee in and we're just gonna give it a big hug. You can cross your arms in front of your leg, you can lace your fingers and you're gonna bring your knee in towards your chest, okay? Here, we're gonna take a deep breath and then as we exhale, let our shoulders relax. You are probably gonna feel this in the front of your hip. If you don't, that's okay. You may feel it somewhere else. If you feel it somewhere else, let me know. I would love to hear where you're feeling it. And then when this position feels like fairly comfortable, I like to move my leg back and forth. Again, I'm just like working those anterior <coughs> attachments. Uh, whoa, I'm getting rated, awesome. <laughs> Uh, those anterior attachments of our hip. Hi, thanks for the yoga. Uh, oh yeah, hi, welcome. How was your yoga stream? That's awesome. We are currently stretching the front of our hips. Um, I, we, we are uh, hugging our knees to our chest. And if that's feeling pretty good for you, we're just going from side to side. So if you just did yoga, this is pretty similar to that stretch that people like to do at the end when you're laying on your back and you're hugging both of your knees. We're doing one at a time, doing some stuff uh, that's good to do when you're sitting in a chair. Welcome everybody, thank you so much for dropping by. 
And when you're feeling pretty good with that leg, we're going to switch to the other leg. Again, bring it up. Grab on to right in front of your knee, not on the joint itself, but right below it. There were rabbits in your yoga stream. Is that what you just said? What? Oh, you did chair yoga. Oh, your bunny knocked out a camera. That's pretty fun. <laughs> well, if you guys did chair yoga, then this is like basically the same thing. Although we are doing some self-massage stuff that you missed. That was a few minutes ago, but we can do some more. All right. We're going to do this for another minute. Remember, keep your shoulders relaxed. Let me remind myself. Get some good movement in the front of your hip there. Again, if there's sharp shooting pain, please back up, modify any way that you possibly can to make that feel better for you. Yeah, we will definitely do hand and forearm massage. I'm definitely needing that. And we'll work our pecs a little bit today too. All right, one more big breath here. We're gonna let this part go and we'll move on to hands and shoulders. And go ahead, all right. Oh yeah, I know, I love hip stretches too, they're fantastic. Um, okay, everybody, so we're gonna move back into uh, some upper body. Uh, we're gonna work on our chest a little bit and our hands, which is one of my favorite things to work on. Um, so uh, one of the things that I like to talk about in this stream is how our regular daily movements affect our nerves and our muscles in the long period, over a long period of time. So when we're at a computer, our arms are forward, right? Um, and when we do that, we are compressing the nerves in our brachial plexus, which is what this area of your body is called. And so uh, when that happens, we can often get tingling and numbness in our forearms and our hands. Uh, sometimes that's diagnosed as carpal tunnel. I just wanna be very clear that carpal tunnel is specifically only uh, this area of your hand. So if you have dysfunction and you actually have carpal tunnel, it's because your carpal tunnel, which is a little tunnel, a uh, tendon sheath that runs through your carpal bones is inflamed uh, and causing your tingling and numbness. But a lot of people have more issues with tingling and numbness that originate in their chest and their neck. So we're gonna work on stretching that out. So the first thing that you wanna do is find your collarbone. Mine are right here. Um, and we're gonna work right underneath our collarbone. There are all of these nice pec muscles um, and then intercostal fibers and muscles that we want to get relaxed. So you're going to find your collarbone and then you're going to stick two fingers right underneath it. Um, you can make some, thank you so much for the follows guys. Uh, you guys can make some big circles underneath here or small circles, whatever feels really good to you where I'm sticking right underneath my collarbone, which is hard to tell in this lighting. Um, and then while I've got my fingers in here, I'm going to bring this hand backwards. So I'm going to get this, I'm going to press into the muscle and then stretch the muscle by moving my arm backwards. And I'm not like doing it super far as you can see, just a little bit to get that stretch. Okay. And as I do that, I'm working medially, uh, medially to exteriorly uh, this way. So across my chest towards my shoulder. And if you wanna make a little shoulder circle while you're doing this, you can definitely do that too. Definitely one of my favorite things. And then when you feel like you've gotten um, this whole area down pretty well, you can move on to the other side. Uh, I, thanks for the question, Homestead. Um, I was a medical massage therapist from 2005 until 2020. When the pandemic hit, I shut down my business. I had a lot of, um, well, I had a wide variety of clients, but a lot of my clients definitely were in the older generation, and I just didn't want to risk accidentally killing any of them. Uh, so I shut down my business. Um, I taught, I started teaching yoga in 2018, but I've been doing tw uh, yoga since 2005 or 2006. Um, so I'm not teaching in real life right now, no. Um, I did for a while before the pandemic, and then... Um, the last two years have been very strange for me. My life has gotten, it's very different than it was before the pandemic. So just teaching online right now. Um, I do like this, this streaming sort of setup. I feel like 
pretty awkward half the time because I just started doing it. But um, but I like the interaction. I like hearing from people, seeing how people are doing, um, targeting the stretching and stuff towards people that are actually here, which is pretty fun for me. Um, okay. When that feels really good for you, um, which I feel like I did pretty good for me, so you guys are probably doing all right. Uh, yeah, the community here is fantastic. Um, okay, so we're going to work on our forearms now. So I like to use my whole hand to do this. Um, that way I can do the inside of my arm and the outside of my arm simultaneously. Uh, and starting at my elbow, I want to go just up above my elbow because there's a lot of nerve endings right next to the skin here that I don't want to press on. I'm going to bring my thumb here and we're going to work on the inside of our arms first, but you can squeeze on this side too if you want to. And I'm going to use my thumb all the way across those muscles and I'm going to try and give you guys a good angle. And while I do this, I'm going to keep my hand bent forward like this and then I'm going to squeeze and then extend my hand. So this is again another pin and stretch, which is one of my favorite ways to... <laughs> AI simulation, nice. Uh, I wanna, pin and stretch is one of my favorite ways to stretch. Um, it's a good reminder to our brains that our muscles can actually move a lot further than it sometimes thinks. Um, if we are only holding our bodies in one position for a while, our brain starts to think that that's the new normal. Um, and so by pinning and stretching, we're like preemptively shortening the muscle and then lengthening it beyond what it was at its resting state. Um, and that sends a reset message to our brain, which is pretty cool. Um, so you're going to work your way all the way up your arm. Um, I sometimes like to do a rolling, ooh, backwards, here we go. I like to sometimes do a rolling movement across my arm while I do this, uh, just to get more of the muscle fibers in one go. Um, and then you can also, when you're flexing and extending, you can make circles with your hand at the same time. And then when you feel like you've gotten the inside of your forearm done pretty well, we'll do our extensors on the other side. Uh, similar situation, except for we're not using our thumbs, so we're gonna use our fingers here. Um, and this one, you can actually use your fingers to roll back and forth over the muscles if you'd like to, or you can pin and stretch this, which is the opposite movement. So we're gonna have an ex a complete extension, and then we pin the muscle, and then we flex to stretch. Just working your way up that arm. It almost looks like I'm playing a guitar. <laughs> And then you can also um, have your hand flexed the other direction and then pin and stretch too. That's a kind of an interesting way to get it going. All feels pretty good though. And I keep getting people dropping in and out. So just as a reminder, once again, if you're feeling any sharp shooting pain, definitely back off. Find a different way to make it work for you. Sharp shooting pain is never something that we should be feeling when we're stretching. If we're doing that, then we're hurting ourselves and we don't wanna be doing that. So we wanna feel better. All right, when that arm feels really good to you, we're gonna move into stretching and massaging our own hands. Okay, so right here, we're gonna start with this big thumb muscle. I always forget if it's pollis or brevis or what it is, but it's the big thumb muscle. So this one flexes your thumb in and out. Okay, so we're gonna grab onto it and I'm gonna keep my hand center. And I'm just gonna move my thumb while I do this, actually. So I'm gonna keep the rest of my hand stable. And then I like to dig my fingers in here and then pull my thumb back a little bit as I work my way through this muscle. And you'll find that certain parts of this muscle are sore and other parts feel totally fine. Um, I mean, it depends on what you're doing with your hands. Yeah, this is really good for climbers. This is also good for anybody who uses a keyboard or texts on their phone. Anything that we're doing that's like small finger movement. And then when you've gotten this muscle pretty well for yourself, we're going to go into pinching right here. This is the uh, headache reflex point. Um, in acupuncture or acupressure, I guess, because we're not stabbing ourselves with needles. Um, so definitely get in there and squeeze a bit. We're going to squeeze in between each finger as well. 
I like to pin and then drag my finger through the tissue there while spreading my fingers out. I like always forget which way is center. Here we go. There it is. Get that pinky. And then we want to make sure that we get all the muscles on the side of our hand too here. So I'm like just pinching, pinching. You can pin and stretch this section of your hand too, or you can pinch and like roll it in or roll it out, whatever is feeling really good for you. Um, I like to stick my thumbs in there and just like dig around a bit. Okay, after you've gotten that done, we're gonna stretch this section. Um, I like to make sure that I have my thumb involved when I do this. If we stretch just this section of our hand like this and we don't get our thumb, then we're missing this whole section of our arm in that stretch. So make sure that you're using your hand. If you're at a desk, you can do both hands at the same time just by sticking your fingers up against the edge of your desk and pressing away from you. Um, um, or you can just use this hand. Uh, or if it's enough of a stretch for you, <laughs> I'm like looking at the camera too much um, and being super awkward. Um, you can just put your hands together. This should be a Twitch mandatory break, definitely. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to get happening. Um, okay. Let's move on to the next side. We have this whole other forearm to get to. Go ahead and start on that inside of your arm and pin and stretch. How has teaching online been for you, Homestead? Really work your way through all of those muscles. If you feel anything that's extra sore and you need to spend some extra time on that, that's always a good idea. Uh, sometimes I go through my arm and I'm like, oh, my wrist feels really good, but it's super tight down here. So I just spend a bunch of time down here. I, we talk about balance a lot in the world of stretching, but we also have to remember that we don't use our bodies in a balanced way most of the time. A lot of us have hand dominance um, or we are, uh, you, well, we all have hand and foot dominance, so there's that right there. Like if you walk upstairs and you're a right foot dominant, then chances are you're always going to be walking up the stairs starting on the right side. So your right hip, if the stairs are an uneven number, are probably gonna, is probably going to be tighter than your left one. So when we're stretching, we can stretch to create balance, but that usually means that we're spending more time on one side than the other, depending on what we're doing with our bodies. So I think that's something that gets left out of a lot of yoga classes or at least all the ones that I've taken um, it's hard to teach a huge group of people and then make sure that everybody's getting the exact kind of stretching on this exact same part of their body that they need so like whenever you are doing your own stretching practice it's really important to make sure that you can spend more time on your right shoulder if it needs it versus your left shoulder or whatever it is that's paying um, that's in more pain than the other side or tighter than the other side all right, if you've gotten that inside of your hand pretty well, go ahead and move on to the outside. I found that I was moving on to the outside um, before I was done with my inside because this part is more sore. And as you can see, I'm digging my fingers in here pretty hard, squeezing onto my forearm pretty hard. Um, and then, you know, I'm working my extensors right here, but I'm still doing this like pin and stretch from the other side. So however this pin and stretch works for you, just it's all good. There's no hard and fast rules as long as you can feel the stretch. So you can see I'm like wiggling my fingers a little bit here because this area is really, really sore for me. Um, and this is where those uh, extension muscles originate for our fingers. So as I wiggle my fingers through here, I'm getting like a micro pin and stretch that's happening. But generally, yes, if we're doing extensors, then we're going to be pinning and stretching the opposite direction that we did before. All 
All right, and if you're feeling good with that, we're gonna move on to our hands. Um, but since you've just been massaging your forearms and maybe holding your arm up the way I was, go ahead and give your shoulders some circles. Give them a little bit of a break from holding them up. Okay, and moving into our hand. Um, another thing that I didn't talk about the last hand that we did um, is our carpal bones. So we have, I believe, seven of them. And we have a cat that's freaking out back there, sorry. Um, we have seven of them and we, when we're typing or um, driving or, or whatever it is that we're doing, we're definitely putting pressure on these muscles. And if they are inflamed and you are having tingling and numbness in this carpal tunnel area, one of the things that we can do is create space. And the way I like to do that is by gripping my wrist all the way around and then pulling straight up and then opening my hand. Um, when I do that, I'm lengthening all the tendons through here and then stretching them as well. When we lengthen this area, we actually create space in between the carpal bones, which can create space for our carpal tunnel and it can help decrease uh, any inflammation that we have in that area. <laughs> Seven cats, that'd be crazy. I do have three, that's crazy enough, and one of them is, isn't even inside most of the time. They are wild sometimes. Uh, I have two siblings and then we rescued a barn cat about a year and a half ago. And he is a very sweet cat, but he is not a very good indoor cat. He likes to poop in my plants. <laughs> All right, let's get to town on this thumb muscle. <laughs> Fourteen pets. You know what? I'm gonna guess from your name that you have a homestead, uh, which is something that I definitely want in the future. So like fourteen pets doesn't really freak me out that much if you have a homestead. Four goats, four rabbits, and six guinea fowl. Ooh, so cool. I don't know very many people that have guinea fowl. That's awesome. And goats are super cool. Uh, I just started learning how to make soap over the last few months and I definitely want to make some goat's milk soap in the future. I think that'd be really awesome. Um, if you've worked this muscle pretty well, go on and go ahead and move into pinching that nice little acupressure spot between your thumb and your first finger. Um, you can wiggle your fingers around during this or just press it. <laughs> uh, you know, this is a really sensitive area so you may not have to squeeze very hard to get the stretch there. And you may want to relax your hand when you do it too. What kind of rabbits do you have, Homestead? I met somebody 10 years ago when I first started massaging who had Angora rabbits. And I went to her house a couple of times and she taught me how to make yarn out of their fur. It was really cool. And she had like some little hand spinning tools and uh, she had a, a spinning wheel also, and she ended up making me these really soft fingerless mittens of yarn that she had pulled from her rabbits and spun herself and dyed. It was really cool. And I still have them. They are super warm. They've held up really, really well. Uh, I... <laughs> I would love to do stuff with yarn. I did a little bit of spinning for a little while with her. Um, I had kids though, and then my life kind of got weird <laughs> because of it. Uh, I, I think it's always about trying to find balance in our daily lives, and it took me probably like six or seven years to find balance again after having children, and I still, I think, like daily have to try and find it. So I haven't done a lot of activities for myself that I would have been doing um, normally uh, if I hadn't had children. So still working on it. No, not currently doing anything with yarn. I also had a house fire uh, after the pandemic started and all of my yarn supplies and stuff were completely lost. Yarnia, huh? Is Yarnia... Uh, Somebody on Twitch or um, a store, a streamer, perfect. Cool, I'll definitely check them out. 
I'm all about all that homesteading stuff. I've been thinking about, there's a couple of empty lots in my neighborhood. Um, and I've been thinking about approaching the owners uh, to see if I can start like a little community farm in my neighborhood. Because I think, you know, we all need to have access to little plots of land where we can grow food and share with the community. Oh yeah, everybody was out safe. It was totally fine. It was crazy. It happened at like four o'clock in the morning. An arsonist lit my neighbor's garage on fire and we um, we were like in a little like 12 plex apartment. Um, and it just totally destroyed <laughs> like my whole side of the building. It was crazy. Romanian streamer. Oh, cool. I wonder if she's the same yarn lady that I'm following on Instagram. There's some some cool yarn artists out and about. All right, so if you've gotten through that hand pretty well, we'll just get that little stretch happening. Um, again, if you want to do this on your desk, go for it. Make sure you're relaxing your shoulders while you're stretching. Yeah, everybody was fine. Yeah, I that's my big struggle. And I live in a small town still. I mean, it's a city. Um, and it's pretty small and I still every single day like I need I need to walk outside and not be next to immediately next to a neighbor I need like some outdoor time we're pretty lucky here though my neighborhood is like strangely like urban and rural at the same time like I have a wetland in my backyard which the kids really enjoy so I do get more of it but growing is definitely an important part of what I need as a human Okay, all right, if that feels good and you've gotten through your hands and forearms as well as I have, they're gonna feel nice and loose now. Uh, we're gonna do one more thing before we end because I've already been on here for an hour, which is a little longer than I planned, but that's cool. We're gonna do some neck stretching. This is one of my favorite things to do. It seems terrifying <laughs> for a lot of people initially, um, but we're going to pin and stretch our, um, our scalene muscles which are really big neck stabilizers and they also help turn our heads. And then we're gonna also get into this SCM, which you can see sticking out as I turn my head. We're gonna start with that one. So the SCM, the sternocleidomastoid, attaches uh, right here underneath our clavicle to the backside of our clavicle and to this big bon bony landmark behind our ear. Um, so you're gonna go ahead and turn your head one direction so that you can get yours to pop out. And then you're gonna go ahead and get your thumb and your first finger. I'm using the inside of my first finger and my thumb, and I'm just gonna pin it. And then after I've got it pinned, I'm gonna move my head from side to side. But let me know if you start streaming in the crafting section, Homestead. I'll definitely check you out. And I think it sounds like you are streaming yoga stuff too, so I'm definitely gonna catch that too. And I'm glad you came across my stream too. And as you get into this SCM, I start here at the bottom, um, but I work my way up as I go through this muscle too, all the way up until I get to right behind my jaw, which is the probably the tensest area for most people. And when I get in there, I like to tilt my head from side to side. And then, you know, a little massage therapist trick when I'm here, and I don't know if you can see it, so just let me know if you can. When I'm getting this upper section, I like to stick my thumb in on the back side, and then as I tilt, I'm dragging my thumb across the muscle just to get a little bit more. At that point, I'm not just getting my SCM, I'm getting those posterior scalenes as well. And some of those muscles in the neck. And I'm dragging as I tilt my head away from the muscle. Yeah, it probably will feel pretty strange, um, especially if you've got your fingers in next to your throat and it's gonna be pretty weird. But if it's sore and it's and you feel like you're working out some soreness, that's awesome. Um, we're gonna work more on our scalenes now after you've gone through that SCM. Um, so you're gonna find the exact side of your neck right here, okay? 
Um, I'm just poking here and I already know it's sore. Um, I'm gonna stick two fingers uh, just like this and then I'm gonna tilt my head away from that section. And I like to move my fingers up and down the side of my neck while I do this, um, just so you can see. And actually, if I'm gonna get down here, I'm gonna use my opposite hand. So opposite hand, two fingers, start right here at the base of your neck and then push in and stretch away. If you hear any like little crunches or pops, that's probably just your spine getting used to being stretched a little bit. As long as it doesn't hurt you, it's totally fine. Um, when these muscles get really tight, our neck, our cervical spine uh, just kind of like crunches together. Um, so creating movement in there can create a lot of like little odd snap crackle pops. So again, you're gonna stick your fingers in and then tilt your head away. Starting at the bottom and working your way up towards your ear. And you can do a similar thing as you were doing with the SEM and drag your fingers down as you tilt your head away, which also feels pretty awesome. And then make sure you're really getting this, this bottom section. All right, moving on to the next side, opposite hand again. Start there at the bottom of your neck. And tilt away. Go ahead and keep that up. As you're getting used to that, Sometimes I try to pin and stretch these muscles as well, which can be really hard just because there's a lot that you have to grab on to do it. Um, but if you can, um, if you tilt your head towards your hand, uh, you can pin that bottom of the bottom of the shoulder or top of the shoulder, bottom of the neck right here. I don't know if you can see it very well, but you can grab right there and you can tilt away from that as well. Hi, Dante. Thank you so much for dropping in. We're just uh, finishing up, but welcome. Just getting through these uh, scalene muscles, stretching them out, giving them a little massage. We are gonna end uh, working on our jaw. So I'll give you about 30 more seconds to finish up with that neck while I check the comments. Oh, <laughs> she's live right now, awesome. Hey, thank you so much, uh, Homestead, for dropping by. Oh, thanks, Dante. It's good to know. Okay. All right. Let's get into our jaw. This is one of my favorite things to do. Uh, and I'm going to add a little uh, tip for getting that jaw relaxed, especially if you feel like you are a jaw clencher. Um, this is something that's going to make your face look really silly, but, you know, that's not really important. Uh, and I like to do this when I'm driving because I feel like that's when I'm clenching my jaw the most. Um, so funny thing, if your tongue is tired, then you will have a very hard time clenching your jaw. So what I like to do is make circles in my mouth with my tongue. I'm going to go 10 times one direction so you can see what I'm doing, and then hopefully you'll join me part of the way through because it's pretty self-explanatory. But I keep my mouth closed, and then I'm going to stick my tongue into my cheek, I'm going to press pretty hard while I do this too. And then make the rounds. <laughs> I don't think I need to do it 10 times, but you guys can do it 10 times. And then when you've gotten 10 times in one direction, do 10 times in the other direction. So. While you're doing this, pay special attention to the center of your cheek here. Yeah, you may feel it. There's like a band of, um, I'm, I think it's like a tendon that runs through the side of your cheek. It might not be actually, now that I'm thinking about it. But 
there's a band right in the center, and if you press your tongue into it, it will actually take some of the pressure off of your jaw. <laughs> Not messing with you. I do this all the time. It's really good for jaw relaxation. It looks ridiculous, though. And besides, I can't see you. You can only see how silly I look. Okay, when you're done doing that, uh, take your fingers to the corners of your mouth, and you're going to drag down, <laughs> make an epic frowny face, and then drag back. <laughs> okay. Um, and then we're going to move into our jaw. So once again, this is your masseter for anybody who isn't aware. Um, it's a very big muscle uh, for your face. <laughs> um, and actually compared to all of the other muscles in your body, if they were you know, a similar size as the masseter. The masseter is actually one of the strongest muscles in your body. So it attaches right here underneath your cheekbone and connects to your mandible. Um, thank you so much for stopping by, Creative. Uh, we're just gonna give this some really good circles right here with both of our fingers. I like to do both sides at the same time. Um, you can start by focusing right underneath your uh, cheekbones, uh, close to your ears, and start with your circles right there. You too, I'll see you next week. Go ahead and make those big circles or small circles if you want to make small circles. You can also start at the top or the, at the bottom of your cheekbone, press your fingers in and then drag them down towards your mandible to the bottom of your jaw. Do a couple more times, a couple more circles. And we're gonna take our fingers, two fingers, on either side of the bridge of your nose, underneath your eyes, and you're gonna press in gently and then spread your skin. Spread it towards your ears. If you tilt your head back a little bit and you've got sinus congestion, it's spring where I am. Or no, is it spring? Yeah, it's spring. <laughs> It's uh, going to be spring soon. It's technically still winter, but everything is starting to bloom. So if you have allergies, this is a great thing to do to help keep your sinuses nice and clear. Um, and actually pressing gently is even more effective for that. Um, it's gonna also help uh, with circulation in your face. And then you can also just bring one finger and then move your fingers from the bridge of your nose and up in a smiley face shape towards your temples. And then when we get to our temples, we're actually going to get all of our fingers and we're going to stick them right on the sides of our heads. You can see it better right here. I'm right above my cheekbone, right in front of my ears. We're going to go up through our temples through this big muscle on the side of our head called our temporalis. All of our fingers and we're going to press up towards the top of our heads. If you're into it, you can grab your hair at the base and pull straight up just to create a little bit more space between the skin and your skull for some more blood flow. It can also be really stress relieving. Fingers in at the sides, press up. And then if you wanna give your scalp some circles, that's a good thing too. And that's all, that's all we're gonna do today. I hope that you found that super beneficial. Thank you everybody so much for your follows today. If you got any uh, anything out of this, please stop by again. Your body will be really, really grateful to you. Um, and you know, self-care is one of the most important things that we can do. Uh, we can't take care of other people or our partners or houses or be good at our jobs if we are feeling uh, like on the edge of burnout or burning out or you know, whatever it is that's going on that's putting our stress over the edge. So anytime you can even take like two minutes to just massage your jaw or give yourself a little head massage or get those hands into working shape, please do that for yourself. Um, my schedule is officially Mondays and Wednesdays, 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. I'm running a little bit over time. Right now I'll probably usually only stream for about an hour and I'm always happy to hear how things worked for you. 
uh, what is bothering you this week or the week that you're jumping in so that I can help uh, provide stretches that will help you with that thing that's going on. Um, you know, any comments or suggestions, let me know. Thank you all so much for coming today. It's a pleasure being a part of this Twitch community. You guys are fantastic. Thank you. See you next time.